אנחנו עוברים עכשיו לרעיון <coughs> עם uh, אירינה נבזלין, אישיות מיוחדת איכותית שמקדישה את חייה ואת כל שעותיה לפיתוח ולטיפוח המורשת של העם היהודי כבסיס לכך שיהיו כאן בישראל חיים יותר איכותיים. תודה רבה וכל טוב. תודה רבה ש... So I'm uh, here with uh, Irina Neveslin, who is the chair of the board of directors of the Museum of the Jewish People at Petat Tzvotot, and also the head of the Nadav. And we're talking about the vital Israeli-American relationship. So I guess the first big question, your assessment, do you think that the United States, even in this day and age, has Israel's back if we find ourselves in, under existential threat? First, very nice to be here and very, very nice to see you. Um, I would like to clarify something. I don't think Israel faces any existential danger. I think uh, the history of the Jewish people proven that we, we, we meet a lot of dangers. However, we know how to go through them, so I wouldn't use the word existential. As for your question, I think that for absolutely yes. I think absolutely the United States will have Israel's back, and I'll explain why. First of all, this relationship exists for many, many decades to come. And it, I don't see any real reason that it's going to change because, there are, of course, a lot of changes happening in the world and there are very deep changes. However, I think it will change the dynamic of the relationship, but not the relationship it's, itself. Now, we are bound by the same shared values, by the values of uh, democracy. And more so, United States has the only ally in the Middle East region, which is internationally is considered one of the most important strategic regions in terms of the influence. And so to have the ally which shares your uh, world views, to share, shares your um, values, I think is critical for United States interests. So in short, I think, of course, United States will always have Israel's back. What do you think are the, are the factors that, uh, that drive American support for Israel? What are, what are the, the elements that, that keep that relationship so strong? You know, it's a, it's a very complicated question I was thinking because it's, it's on so many levels. There's so many um, obvious and not obvious uh, things in that uh, complicated relationship. First, what influences that, I think, the most is the demographic, is the changing demographic. Now, if we look now at the United States, we can see that there are uh, power groups, new, new power alliances and power groups that are rising. So the Hispanic voters, obviously, and the African-American groups. And I think it on, it's on Israel to learn how to work and find the shared interest with those groups. Second is we share, as I said before, we share the same values, values of democracy. Uh, the third point is uh, it's an unfortunate thing, but we share the same enemies. So the, our fight, our quantum enemy is extremism, and we fight it together, and there's no way out of it. And the fourth is something that somebody very smart told me recently, is that we have a very interesting um, similar passions and similarities in our communities. So we are both countries of the land of limited, unlimited uh, possibilities. And we're both um, uh, intrigued by innovation and, and love everything um, new. And we are both uh, uh, good-spirited and want to change the world. And also, there's so many relationships between uh, the communities, not on the political level, but in terms of business and in terms of friendship. There's so much going on between these countries. And I think that, of course, uh, helps greatly to bring right. the yeah, communities they're... together. It's, it's, it's striking how many areas of connection there are, including things, you know, even cultural things. You know, the, the, the amount of American television programming uh, that's based on Israeli programming. Uh, some of those, some of those uh, uh, cross currents are fascinating. And then in the United States, you have the other big Jewish community. Right? We have something uh, in, in over 6 million Jews in Israel, a similar number in the United States, two big Jewish communities. So obviously, it seems to me it's vital that Israel retains the engagement of American Jews. How do we keep American Jews engaged, interested, identified with Israel? We're not doing enough. We need to understand that we're facing now the generational change. And the people who are at the age of 70 plus, let's say, they remember the miracle of the establishment of the State of Israel, the miracle of Six Day War. And all those miracles meant so much for them that their support was unconditional, and rightly so. Now, we're now looking at the generation of, let's say, my age and younger. We're looking at the people who are very much me-focused. It's a me generation. 
And I don't think they have a clear understanding of what's in it for them with Israel. Now, if you look at it from the political views, for example, if you take your identity as a, a what's your ideology, what's your political views, then what you can say is if Israeli government does something that I agree with, I like Israel. If Israeli government does something I disagree with, I don't like Israel. The problem is governments come and go. So if United, if Israel states for younger American Jews as part of their more superficial identity, then I think we'll be in a very big trouble the more, more years will pass. But there is the, Israel is also the beginning of all the Jews. It's where all the Jews come from. It's safe heaven for all the Jews, and it's a homeland for all the Jews, whether they want to live here or not. And I think if that's something that we're going to be able to convey as a message, now, it comes to ultimately the question of how you define yourself and what your identity is. Now, I don't know if you know that, but the topic of identity is something that I'm very, very passionate about. I you wrote a book about it. I wrote a book about it, the power of the impact of identity, the power of knowing who you are. And so what I claim in the book, and I, I'm, you know, that, that's, my, that's my life, the, the, the story of collective identity and personal identity and, and being part of the Jewish people. But there are some things in the identity, some, some parts of the identity which are not going to be ever changed, whether you like it or not. Your roots, where you come from, uh, your heritage is something that is always yours, which I think, by the way, is very helpful in the current changing times, right? So if we young American uh, Jews, Jews the, Israel would be part of that, the roots that never change, I think their relationship with Israel will be much more fruitful both sides, and they will be less dependent on more superficial you know, movements that are happening. Okay, that, obviously education is a big part of that, right? There has to be an emphasis on education on, I think Israelis take Israel for granted as well, so Absolutely. it's not surprising that you know, American Jews... Israel take Israel for granted, and Israelis also take um, um, Jewish people for granted. I think that's part of the big problem, is that lack of understanding the context in the Jewish world. Okay, we'll come back to that in a second on the Israeli side, but I want to ask you first a little personal question. Irina, um, Obviously, you, you weren't born in Israel. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your personal uh, journey. What was it that triggered your engagement and your passion for Israel? You're not a native Israeli <laughs> yourself. <laughs> yeah. um, I will give you a little bit of context. Uh, context. I was uh, born in the Soviet Russia. As uh, anybody who was born there, we were deprived from any formal Jewish education, and frankly, informal. The only religion you can follow was communism, so anything which is you know, for God's sake, my parents wouldn't tell me that I'm Jewish. It's, no. uh, it's, uh, it was too scary. It was uh, underlining. Uh, better that you shouldn't know, in other words. Be yes, better that you should know because you shut up. If you shut up, you don't have problem outside because the, the people are very anti-Semitic by, by nature. So my first trip abroad was to Israel. Now, you need to understand I'm now the chair of the board of the Museum of the Jewish People. But at that point of life, I'm 13, and my knowledge of Israel is very limited. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. I wasn't told. And so I come to Israel, and I, what I expect is to be in a place which is very foreign for me, right? I, what I expect is to find something which is different language, different smells, different everything. And what I find is home. Everywhere I go, I feel much more comfortable than where I come from. So I feel more comfortable than Moscow, where I was raised. I go to Jerusalem, and, and this place talks to me. And then I come to Western Wall. I come to Kotel, and I get this feeling and I know nothing about Kotel. You need to understand, it's, it's sad to say, but I knew nothing what it means for the Jewish people, what what's this place means for other religions. And I come there, and I feel like this is somebody and something I know. This is something that is part of me. And so I think that's the moment where it changed for me Israel forever, because from that moment on, Israel became the focus, Israel became home, and the rest of the world stayed the rest of the world, but Israel became part of me. There was something instinctive inside that connected. There was no intellectual explanation right. to that. There is no, it's just I knew, I knew that it was home. I knew, I felt that I belong. I, I have to say, hearing you say that, I, I felt something similar when I first came here. Um, and I was, I'm, I'm still very English, but yeah, that connection was somewhere deep inside. One last question I want to ask you, Irina, about uh, Israel. We're talking about the, the American-Israeli relationship, and we always talk about, well, the, on the American side. On the Israeli side, uh, is there more that Israel should be doing to have people here understand more about diaspora Jewry, to know what uh, American Jewish life is like, to understand this community. We always talk about the American need to engage and identify with Israel, but what about the other way around? 
Oh, absolutely. I think we don't do merely enough. And uh, I'll tell you, and I'll give you very simple examples. So say Israeli 17-year-old uh, uh, leaves uh, the school. How much does he know, he or she know, about Jewish people? How much do they know about the Jew Jewish people now? I think that it's vital that we create courses, which are going to talk not about history. It's very important to learn history in Tanakh and the uh, Bible, everything. It's very important. However, people live here and now, and people need to understand what they belong to. So if we were to have a course, that is what Jewish people are today. And we were to talk about 15 million people. I don't know how many Israelis know how many Jews are there in the world, how many live in the United States. The fact that their life is so similar and so different, the fact that their struggles are so similar and so different, I really don't think that the education system does enough to tell that story. Now, I do that, as you mentioned, the museum. We do that in the museum. We do it. The reason, the sole reason I'm involved in the Museum of the Jewish People is because I want to make sure that the story of what the Jewish people are today is told. And by the way, we're going to open the new museum in October, and it's going to be the biggest Jewish museum in the world that is focused on our success rather than on our uh, misery. But I think it's not for museum to do to educate uh, masses. We are, we, are great, we are happy that we can, but it's for education system. I'll give you one more example. I think Israeli youth has a very limited knowledge of what diaspora is doing for Israel, what it did for Israel, what it's doing for Israel. I think the, the, there are some words, there are codes that, codes that um, uh, Jewish, Jewish professionals will know, sort of. But the regular person in Israel has no idea what is APEC doing and how it's all working and what's their role currently now. And, and I think the role of diaspora in Israel also has to be a part of that course. Okay. Irina Nevzen, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much.